Hey everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Christina coming to you from the Cadio. And today our convo is talking about cognitive dissonance, which basically is the narcissistic gaslighting that we hear so much about. And that's basically an abuse tactic that creates um, a sense of confusion where a person can't distinguish um, their, that their own perception of reality is being manipulated and it is a farce. Um, I experienced this hands-on with my narcissist. Uh, you know, I would say to him, oh, do you, do you remember when you said that we're going to do this or do that? And it was, I never said that. And you know you're not crazy. You know that you remember them saying, oh yeah, this weekend we'll, we'll tackle that yard project. Or yeah, let's, we're going to go out to eat, you know, and try this new restaurant out. And even more um, nefarious things. You know, he did lie to about to me about um, meeting his one of his supplies husbands and uh, children and grandchildren, so that way they would feel more comfortable when he would go for bike rides with her. Well, you know, I brought up a few months later that hey, I would really like to meet uh, her and her husband, so I feel as comfortable as you know you took the time and effort to make him feel. I never met her husband. I never met her kids or her grandkids. And it was those things, it's like, did I miss hear something? Did, did, am I in the wrong? You start to question whether it's you. You're the crazy one. And they'll actually say like, you're crazy. How do you not remember that? You know, it's almost like they create the reality and you have to live in their sense and version of the reality and the truth. So that ultimately started to bring me a lot of anxiety uh, while I was still even in the narcissistic abusive relationship. So in order to kind of combat that, sometimes I would actually jot things down. And this might help some of you guys out there if you are in the relationship. Just begin to write stuff down, times and days that they are doing things and things they say. Because any true narcissist is going to gaslight you. You're going to become so foggy and confused in your mind that you're not going to know what's the truth and what's a lie. You're not going to know what to believe and you're going to lose trust in yourself. And that was one of the big things um, once I was discarded and out on my own was to begin to learn to do things. Um, I would always question my judgment because of all the gaslighting. I felt like I couldn't make simple decisions without his approval. I needed his approval and validation in order for me to know that I was making the right decision on something that was affecting my life or our life together. Um, and if I did make a decision without his knowledge or consent, watch out, that was always when um, he would lose it. He'd become unglued and go into some sort of a narcissistic rage. So for a long time after the discard, especially I'd say the first four months, I was terrified to do anything. And I immediately had to position myself where I had all of my cats, all eight of them uh, in one house. So one of the first big projects I had to take on was building the catio. Uh, which I absolutely love and I'm so happy I did because this room embodies all my decisions from, you know, the color of the floor, the walls, everything. It, this is all my design and me doing it on my own without having to uh, consult or have approval from someone of how to spend my money, if I need to do this, you know, who I chose as my builder. I mean, every little detail was always a fight and a battle. And he would always make me feel like it was, if something happened, well, I, I told you you should have went with him or that builder, or I told you you should have picked that floor color. It's like, no, wait, you didn't. And so I think it was a very freeing experience to build the catio and, and kind of be able to actually rely on my own self and trust myself. And that I think really began the process of uh, me starting to heal is being able to begin to make my own decisions on my own independently again. I also uh, purchased a new vehicle and I absolutely love my truck um, and I didn't need him there. It was the first time I ever bought a vehicle without my narcissist abuser and again it was a freeing experience. 
I didn't need to be, you know, told what to buy or if this had enough miles or let's drive two hours to this dealership or that. I did it myself. And again, it was very freeing. But because of all the gaslighting, I was terrified I was going to make the wrong decision. You know, am I going to be able to really afford this? You know, do I need a new vehicle? Can I just get mine worked on? And, and finally, I said, no, I felt in my heart and my gut like, no, you need a new vehicle. You need to do this. It's for my own safety. I do live in a very rural community. And my vehicle was quite, you know, getting up there in age and starting to have mechanical problems. But knowing that I made the right decision for myself just validates that I can handle things. And so can you. If you're in a situation where your partner is gaslighting you, you're experiencing cognitive dissonance, it is important to validate yourself especially when you get out of the abuse. And I hope if you are in it, I am so sorry for you because I know how difficult it is. But please try to get out of an abusive situation uh, or toxic, even if they're not narcissists. Anyone who's gaslighting you, that's highly toxic behavior. And it's only going to progressively get worse. Trust me, I was in my abusive relationship for 18 years. And it took a very, it's still taking time. I'm still in therapy and I'm, it's a healing process every day. It's baby steps to rebuild yourself. But to get out of that mental fog, I highly recommend maybe journaling, writing things down. If you're in the relationship, write down days and times and things that they say. So that way, you know, you're not crazy because truly, I believe in, in all of our hearts, we know we're not crazy and lying uh, about what we heard. We heard things correctly. But it's the narcissist, they make it their full-time job to make you question that reality. So I would highly recommend journaling to start. And when you do get out of the uh, narcissistic abusive relationship, please seek therapy. And make sure it's a licensed therapist who is fully trained in narcissistic abuse. Or also find a mentor, somebody who has been down that path and totally has a full understanding of what it takes to get out of that relationship because it's not gonna be a cakewalk. It's probably the toughest thing I've ever had to go through in my entire life. Um, so anyways, guys, I just wanted to um, talk a little bit about cognitive dissonance and gaslighting because especially if you're new to the community, you start hearing these words and just to kind of have a little bit better understanding of what it actually means. And just know you're not crazy, they're crazy. So if you like this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, anything that's going to help push this kind of content out onto YouTube so that way others have more access and can have a better understanding of what they might be dealing with. So until next time, guys, you take care and have a wonderful day. Bye.